Now, Giant Sable Project and, and Conservation Initiatives. Uh, in 2003, the Catholic University launched the Giant Sable Project in partnership with the Ministry of Environment. And the main objective then was to find the animal, to, to prove if the animal was still alive. It wouldn't make sense to protect uh, an animal that doesn't exist anymore. So the, the, the main priority was trying to, to prove that, that it was still alive. Of course, and, and then after, since 2009, the bulk of the activities are being implemented not through the Catholic University now, but through the Kisama Foundation. Now the priority is conservation, of course. So although the project started in 2003, initially there was a lot of, uh, of uh, chasing ghosts and looking a lot of tracks and, and, and indirect evidence, witness reports. But a main, a main uh, important uh, milestone was in 2004 when we, it was created the, the Shepherd Program. The Shepherd Program means uh, that we picked up on an, on an old story from Kangandala in which they, 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 they said that the, the first guard of the park when the park was created was the chief of the village and because he was so knowledgeable of the animals everyone called him the giant sable shepherd so we, we, we picked up on that story and in the absence of, of rangers or any, any formal uh, security staff we created the new shepherds the shepherd program these people were, were hired from the local community and they became research assistants and at the same time the law enforcement, unofficial law enforcement agents. This was a very important milestone. At the same time, we started a program of putting trap cameras in Kangandawa National Park, hoping to photograph the animal. This was produced results, success. In, in April 2005, we were able to publish the first giant several photos since 1982. You can see here a herd of females, and at the time we were very excited about these photos. We thought, okay, things are not that bad, uh, and we are we are on a, on a, we are in a, in a good position. But you know, as you're going to see through this presentation, the giant sable saga is a it's like a roller coaster. And every time you have a huge success, immediately something totally unexpected uh, follows. We started the regular monitoring through, through the trap cameras and it took us, by 2006, uh, we, re we realized the first, the first alarming uh, thing was that we were, only, we were down to only one herd in Kangandawa. So there was nothing else. It was just one herd of sable in Kangandawa. So that, that was scary enough. Not only that, first, we could not find any bull so every time we would get females, females, females. And then as we started looking closely to some of the photos, uh, in, by 2007, we had to face a completely un, uh, unexpected crisis. We realized that there was hybridization going on in Tangandala, and quite a lot of the animals were not sable at all. They were a mix between giant sable and rowan antelope. This was completely, it took us, you know, we could have picked it up one year before, but it was just such unexpected that we, we just missed it. So, hybridization between these, so these are two completely different species, and we're talking about a, a, a really bizarre event. It's a very rare phenomenon, hybridization between sable and rowan. Doesn't matter, right, giant sable, any race of sable. Only one case was known until now. It, was, it had happened in Kruger Park between common sable and rowan in the 80s. Hybrids, of course, show intermediate features and fertility is unknown. This was the only case known from a female that was born in Kruger Park. Why was this happening in Kangandala? Of course, because only one herd left. The last bull had been shot, most likely. And the females left unattended, they got, they got friends with the wrong bull, and the hybridization started. <laughs> so we must forgive the females.